Well, you know, it's a classic piece, of course, you know. And I was pretty sure they weren't going to cast me as Jesus. Uh, I'm always the villain. You know, the Alice Cooper character has always been the villain. So I was pretty sure I was going to either be Herod or Judas, you know. <laughs> and uh, the Herod part's fun because it really is the only fairly funny song in the whole show. Uh, and it's very condescending. I, the first thing I thought of was Alan Rickman, you know, sort of like looking down, you know, cancel Christmas, you know, that sort of thing. So I think that, I think this character is a really conflicted guy. He's a puppet king. He's not really the king because the Roman Empire are running him. And now he's in the presence of a king that's wearing rags but can do miracles. So he's, he's sort of a ball of paranoia and ego all mixed together. So, you know, he has Jesus right where he wants him, so he's going to poke him with a stick. And that's really what the lyrics do in the song. They just kind of poke, poke at Jesus and make fun of him, you know. I am actually a Bible scholar. My father was a pastor. My grandfather was a pastor. I, I, I uh, go to Bible classes all the time. So the whole idea of bringing Jesus Christ into, into focus as a superstar, which if he were here today, he would be, he would be that because there was no press back then. You know, everything was word of mouth. Jesus would do something, he would heal somebody, and it would spread like wildfire. So he was an immediate curiosity. It's certainly a curiosity. And then it was, he's the Messiah. And he was, <laughs> you know, and uh, they, the Jews were expecting their Messiah to be a conquering hero where he was coming in saying, we're going to do this a different way. We're going to do this with love. And they just, just did not understand that at all. Well, I think we were all brought up in, uh, the United States is basically a Judeo-Christian country. So we've all been, you know, um, it doesn't matter what religion you are, you have been exposed to it. And uh, even if you think of Jesus Christ as a fictional character, He's still a character in your, in your mind. Um, you know, I, I think that we all relate to Jesus in a different way. Christians relate to him, of course, uh, as God, uh, whereas other people relate to him as maybe a great prophet, or some people may see him as a total maniac, you know. But he does relate to everybody on some level, most written about character of all time. So something was going on there. I'm used to working in front of a live audience, so you know, for the last 50 years, that's basically what you do in concerts, is you're in front of a live audience. So I think I would feel more awkward if there wasn't a live audience there. Um, but you know, the, the idea of bringing these characters to life, um, when I first heard this, I, it was 1971, I think, we were just breaking. Our band was just breaking. And uh, we didn't have, really have time to go see a theater piece we were in the studio, or on the road, or in the studio, or on the road. And back then you made two albums a year, and you toured the rest of the time. So you really didn't have time. I'd heard about it. I heard some of the cuts on the radio and things like that. And I went, oh, it's really an interesting idea to bring pop music to this story. You know, and it was pop music. It wasn't classical at all. You know, uh, I Don't Know How to Love Him was just an absolute great pop hit. You know, and this song that I do was basically the vaudevillian song, you know, of the whole show. But the, the idea that his, that his apostles didn't even quite know what to think of him, I think that shows up in the production also, where even Peter and uh, Mark and John, you know, they're all kind of going, who is this guy? You know, we're following him, but, what? you know, we're still not sure if he's who he says he is. So, man, a lot of conflict, but a lot of, I think there was a lot of joy in the, sh in the show, too, you know. And then, of course, you know, the, the tragedy at the end, which, which had to happen in order for salvation to take place. John is the perfect cast for Jesus because he has, a, he has this ethereal quality to him also, a very calmness, which I think Jesus had, this calmness. When they were questioning him, when they were 
when they were doing everything in a court, he sat there and looked at them and didn't answer them. Or he'd say, you said it so. He didn't try to defend himself. I, I, I feel that in, in John Legend. He doesn't have to defend himself, you know. Of course, uh, she has got the great voice. She's got the terrific voice. And she gets, I think, probably the best song in the whole show, you know. And I saw Hamilton, so I know about <laughs> This guy could do anything. It's extremely hard as a songwriter to write a simple melody that, that is married to a lyric and makes it work. The Beatles knew how to do it. Burt Bacharach knew how to do it. Andrew knew how to do it. Working with Tim Rice, Tim Rice has been an old friend of mine forever. And both being lyricists, I think that, and Bernie Taupin, we kind of, kind of brought us all together. Um, so I listen to lyrics a lot. I want, to hear, I want to hear how the story is told, how cleverly it's told. When you can get those lyrics married to that melody, that's when you have something. And he seems to do that in everything he does. Every single show that Andrew did was perfectly put together with the lyrics. So Andrew and Tim together are kind of like Bernie and Elton or John and, and Paul, you know. It was the perfect combination uh, and very hard to do. You know, it's very, very hard to write a simple song.